Hello, everybody. I think we are live. And what I'm looking at today is we're going to be playing around with the framework Chromebook that they just sent to me for review. It's in this box. And we're going to unbox it. And we're going to upgrade it. And we're going to see what else we can do with it. Because apparently this also allows you, let me get my microphone adjusted here, um, this also allows you to uh, run Steam games, but through Chrome OS. So we're going to have a lot of fun with, uh, with this. And Romeric, as always, is first in. Welcome to the stream. And these are always unannounced, generally. I pop on whenever I've got something to do that I thought or think that you might all find interesting. And so this is on loan, I believe, and they sent me um, some RAM so that we can do an upgrade during this stream. And so when we do the full review, we will refer to the B-roll footage that we are going to capture in here. James Randolph is here. Hola. So James, uh, you will be excited about this. I have made arrangements to start getting my antennas mounted on the house. So I'm going to get my VHF antenna up there. I had the guy come by today. And then I'm going to have some spots where I can run cable out of the house easily without the mice coming in with them <laughs> and get my HF antennas up. So it's going to be fun. So I'll be doing more amateur radio stuff in the near future. Chuck Smith is here. Hello there. And what I'm going to do here is just get my B-roll set up. And I thought we'll just start unboxing this thing and see what we've got going on here. Uh, and Kevin Hawthorne is here, too. All right, so why don't we uh, take it out of the box and see what we are working with here. That label is not, not my label. That's their label. <laughs> so there's no address that I'm giving away here with that, at least for me. All right, so let's get this undone. Now, this is their Chromebook. What I need to find out is if it is locked to Chrome OS, and I suspect that it is. And, of course, they have um, another version that runs Windows and Linux natively. Hey, today is Kevin Hawthorne's birthday, so hopefully everybody can wish Kevin a happy birthday in the chat, as I will do verbally. All right, so let me get the overhead view going here, just to show you what's in the box. And what's in the box... Don't look at all that stuff over there. I'll just zoom in a little bit here. There we go. <laughs> um, what's in the box here is the laptop. And then we have the power adapter. So let's take that out of the box. So we have... Everything's very neatly packaged. So we have their USB Type-C power adapter. This is a... How many watts is this sucker? Output. I think this is 60 watts max. This must be a GAN um, adapter because it's pretty small. But what I like about it is that it doesn't have those little prongs that float down. You actually get a, a cable here. <laughs> and then this is the cable for the wall. Except I do have my power supply on the ground. Well, I'll just use this one. It's closer. So we'll use that. And then the way these framework laptops work is that they have these USB-C ports on them but they have you buy these little modules. So this works just like the other one does, where you've got, um, in the case of these two, these are basically just USB extenders. So the USB-C ports, as you'll see in a minute, are kind of recessed in, and they offer these little adapters. So if you, you got four of them, and if you don't want a USB-C port, but would prefer a USB-A, you can swap the modules out. So it looks like we're gonna have two USB-C and two USB-A, but they have like display adapters and all sorts of cool stuff there. So you have that too. And it looks like, um, sorry, that was my, that was Jake. Um, yeah, so it's good stuff. Uh, Joseph wants to know, do I use a Chromebook myself? I do occasionally. I have a Pixelbook Go that Google sent to me for review oops, uh, years ago. And I use it um, quite a bit. Actually, my kids use it a lot. So, yeah, I, I like them for certain things. And this one intrigues me because it's one of the few that's actually upgradable, both on its storage and uh, some other stuff, and RAM. Roman is here. 
Good to see you, Roman. Yes, this is something, I think this is pretty new. And I think it's the same hardware, but they have, they have to meet the Google requirements for this. So it has to have um, some specific things when it comes to the keyboard. So here is the Chrome, the framework laptop. As you can see, it's got the Chrome labeling on here, so you know it's the Chromebook. And this is where those modules slide in. So th theoretically, you could just plug USB-C cables directly into these, because it's got four USB-Cs. And I am pretty sure these are USB-4 rated, actually Thunderbolt. I think they got Thunderbolt certified. Got some stickers. You got some Chromebook stickers. And of course, you have the screwdriver and spudger that comes with it. And we'll use this to uh, take a look inside. I don't think we have to take the bottom of the chassis off. I think everything is accessible through the keyboard component. And then you have your instruction manual here. And the deal with these things is that everything is serviceable. But as you'll see, the, the main board incorporates a lot of stuff. Toss that over there. Okay. So there is the laptop. I'll give you the other view here. And here you go. So it looks a lot like the other one, except as you'll see, the keyboard is a Chrome OS keyboard. And I'm guessing on the other version, you could probably install Chrome OS Flex on it. So if you wanted to have some kind of dual booting, Thing you could do that. So there you go. Yeah, it feels, looks a lot like the other one. Metal. Um, and I think you just pop the keyboard component off here to get inside of it. I forgot the process, but we will, we'll look that up on their website in a minute. Yeah, I think this is something that Google wanted to support because of the sustainability aspect and the upgradability aspect. Because I think one of, the, one of the knocks against the Chrome OS world is that things typically aren't all that upgradable. Um, but this one, you know, kind of is. That was kind of their, their approach to it. Now, the way these modules work is they just pop into the into the side here. Let me give you the other view. So what we're going to do is slide this module in. And by the way, everything that you have on a framework laptop, every part has a QR code where you can be taken to a place where you can acquire one. And you'll see that on the bottom here when I take this one out. So I'm going to open up this one. This is the USB-C. So I think what I'll do is I'll have a USB-A and a USB-C on both sides. And you can see here, there is a thing there for that. So the updates now on these are, I think it's now up to eight or nine years. From the time, not the time that you buy it, but the time that they released that platform. And one of the things that I asked them, I didn't get a, a, a straight full answer on it yet, but it would seem to me that Chrome OS Flex would be a good target for out-of-date Chromebooks that are still functional, right? So we'll see. We're going to try to go and visit them, actually, because they're in New York. Not far there. Gil Garcia is here. Hello there. Thanks for stopping by the chat today. And it's not my birthday, but it's Kevin Hawthorne's birthday. All right, so let's slide this module in here. All right, so we're good there. And let's uh, fire her up here and see what we get. I'm going to attach this to my, my guest account or my, te my test account. And it may need to be plugged in, so we'll do that. And this is USB-C, so you'll plug it in with, the, you know, with one of the USB-C modules on it. Oh, I have a cable right here. Let's just use this one. Happen to have one. I had two power adapters hooked up, so we'll just use that one for now. All right, let's see what we get.
And I've got to remember how to crack one of these things open. Is this a touch screen? No. And what I'll do here is pull up their Yeah, so let's go to their repair guides, and I'll pull this up on. Do you want to activate Chromebox, the built-in screen reader for Chrome OS? No, we, we're good. We're good on that. All right, so I'm going to show you. So they just have the laptop. So I'm guessing that this is the same functionally as the Windows version, except that it, it has all the things that Chrome OS requires, is what I think we're looking at here. Let me zoom in a little bit. It's got a nice tall screen, as you can see. I think this is, let's look at the uh, resolution on it. So let's look at a memory upgrade real quick. And I'll pull up the support page here. That's right, so you shut down the laptop, you pull the front bezel off. Oh, you do have to go under the bottom, okay. And then you lift up the top. And that's how you'll do the memory. So we'll, we'll take this apart after we get it set up. But first, we're going to get started. And I'm going to connect it to my Wi-Fi. And this does support um, 6E. But down here, I just have 6, because I don't really need anything faster than that. And of course, we've got to check for updates. It's got a pretty nice, bright display, too. I don't think so, Roman. I th I'm pretty sure they're just like USB-C things, so it shouldn't require a reboot. I think it's just working like any USB-C device would. And I would imagine in most cases, there's probably nothing uh, you know, I think they're all just kind of on the USB-C spec, is what I think they might be. This display is nice. You know, I can't remember, you know, I looked at the other one, um, A while ago, um, my brother had bought it, and I remember it looking pretty good, but I think this display looks nicer than his. But I could just be misremembering. But it, this display looks really nice. I'm really pleased with the, the quality. The uh, contrast ratio, like this black text looks really good. I, I can't show it to you on camera, <laughs> but it looks really nice and clear, especially for my, my aging, blurry eyes. Choose my pin. Now, I don't know if it has any biometrics on it, so we'll see when. Let's, uh, let's skip that. So this one, I guess by default, it's 256 gigabytes with 8 gigs of RAM. But it's a framework laptop, so unlike many Chromebooks, it's upgradable. So they sent over some RAM modules. So they're going to they're have us upgrade this to uh, 64 gigabytes is what they're going to do on there. All right, let's see what we get here. And Tellurian um, in Russian says that he doesn't like the uh, Google, um, doesn't like the, the start screen for Google. He says it's creepy. He says that's, what, that's how the translation came out. Hopefully I got that right. And Crazy D says, uh, just joining, I didn't think, I guess it depends on how much, uh, how much money was offered. Because <laughs> I know that Google partnered with um, with them, because I actually met with some of the Chromebook team at an event I was at last week, and boy, this display looks super nice. I really like this display. All right, so let, what we have to do, of course, before we do anything, is check for updates. So let's do that first. About Chrome, 
Maybe we are up to date. Let's see. Let me go in this way. And of course, it's got to download all the stuff that we usually have on my account here. So we got to let that do its thing before we do any other things. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my, um, my tests on this. But I want to run the test first and then upgrade it because I have a feeling that it's going to perform better when we put these modules in because right now I think it's only in single channel mode. We'll find out when we open it up. Christoph Howard is here. Hello there. Flood of Sins is here. Hello there. Yeah, we could get 64 gigs on this. I don't think there is a, many Chromebooks with that much RAM. <laughs> but there you go. Silver wants a fully upgradable laptop. These are mostly up, fully upgradable. The, the, the one problem with them is that it, it doesn't have, um, here we got to restart for a, an OS update. Um, the, the main board, namely the processor and a lot of its accoutrements are all on a single big memory board. So you can swap that out and keep the rest of the components, but you can't, like, take it, you can't just take the processor out and put a new one in. So that's one thing to, to bear in mind. I don't think this has any biometrics on it. Let me double check on that. I don't think it does. It looks good, though. And to some degree, what I like about their design is that it's pretty simple. You know, like it's not overdoing anything. Um, what, was, what was I looking for? I was looking for biometrics. Keyboard flexes a little bit. Yeah, I don't think it's got any fingerprint login. It did have an option for a pin, but that's one thing that I would like to see as a fingerprint reader, which it doesn't have. Let me see. Oh, here's where I, where I, would, where I would find that. Let me take a look in that spot here. Yeah, so our only option is uh, PIN or password. And this has an i5 on board. I think it's the only configuration they have for the Chromebook version. So Jose is asking, hello, K KQ4, CKU. Uh, what laptop would I recommend for ham radio? You know, you would do well with, honestly, anything um, because the ham radio stuff does not require a lot of horsepower. So I would look for, you know, my, my advice typically is to stick to the, the well-known brands, but like I would try to look for like the lowest cost Lenovo or Dell you can find. Running Windows, you know, bulk of the, the stuff out there is Windows based um, or something you can put Linux on, but you could, you could easily get by with a $500 or less laptop for ham radio stuff. Uh, display resolution. Let's take a look. Yeah, I think it's all, yeah, it's still downloading apps and stuff. I think it, maybe it's done. Okay. So the display resolution. Let's see. Device displays. I got to look this up because it, it doesn't have the actual resolution on the screen here. So let me pull up the specs on this. So, it's got an i5-1240p. It's got the XE graphics on board. So we should see, and, when, and you'll see this in a few minutes when we, after we do our first round of benchmarks on it. Um, it has 256 gigabytes of storage, 1x 8 gigabyte module, but we're going to upgrade it to the 32 times 2 to 64. 
um, what else we got? Wi-Fi 6E. It weighs 1.3 kilograms. The display resolution, oh, a 1080p 60 webcam. That's nice. Twenty two fifty six by fifteen oh four, and it is a uh, three by two. And just give me one second. Thir so it's thirteen point five inches. And it runs at 400 nits. And give me a second here because I am going to just get my notes up to date here. All right. The answer to this question is meh. It, it's not great. I think if you if you're into Teams and you know the Microsoft world, the Microsoft Windows operating system is probably your better bet. And this is from a company called Framework, and they make fully upgradable laptops that are that you can work on yourself. In fact, they give you a screwdriver in the box and encourage you to work on it yourself. Um, so for testing, I run these in uh, standard mode, but what we're going to do in my review is actually put it into a beta tier because um, we're going to look at Steam because there is a version now of Steam on Chrome OS beta where we can actually install Steam on here and download some of those games. We have to switch to the beta channel to do that, so we're going to kind of do that after I run a few tests on it. There's not much, not many tests to run, but. Um, Chromebooks do support Android apps. And so not all of them will run in your Chromebook, but if you go over here, you can pull up the Google Play Store and you'll find a bunch of uh, apps that you can download there. Now, one thing that is an issue on Chrome OS, and I don't expect this to be any different, is that the Widevine version that Chrome OS supports through Android will not deliver the highest resolution on the Netflix app, for example. So we'll wait for this to install, but I suspect that we're not going to see the kind of resolution that you would get off the web browser. There is a bit of deck flex on this. I'm not sure if that's been an issue in the past, but you can see it. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it does flex a bit. And you can swap them, but you have to swap the whole motherboard. I don't think that the processors are removable. Thunderbolt and USB 4 are very similar now, and they're cross-compatible. And we actually showed an example of a Thunderbolt 3 eGPU working over Thunderbolt 4. And what happened was, I think when they first released these laptops, they, they were not... Th Thunderbolt does require a certification process, which they got certified. So then, uh, they, they, I think they now say these are Thunderbolt compatible. So I'm going to get an answer to this question. Um, I, you could certainly install Chrome OS Flex on a framework laptop, but this one is specifically running Chrome, and I would imagine there is probably some hardware lockout like we've seen on other Chromebooks, and of course it's got the Google certified keyboard. So they do have a certification program in Google for the Chromebook labeling. Um, the keyboard is backlit? Yes, it is backlit. 
and I think you could replace it if there was one available. You can buy a new keyboard from them, but it's not going to be any different than the one it comes with. Do you get better resolution on the, yes, for Netflix, yes. And that's one thing I'm, I'll look at. And you can find out very quickly here. So let me, let me log into my Netflix account and we'll take a look. So this is, this is the Android version of Netflix. And if I jump in, oh shoot, here, I'm sorry. Hang on a second. Sorry, I left my kids stuff in the car. So I think there is a screen on here that will tell me what version of, I think I have another app that I can pull up. Let me do that real quick. I will pull up that app that I have. I'm so used to having a touch screen on my Chromebook these days that, let me find it. There's a DRM system info thing that I've got. DRM info, here it is. All right, so. I'm just looking through here. Widevine. So this is rated for Widevine L1. And I think Let me go back and look at this. Right. Oh, interesting, actually, because typically we don't see L L1 on a Chromebook. But this one is reporting L1. Usually it's L3. So that's new. So what I'm curious about now is whether or not we see some changes here. All right, so let's go look up one of these Netflix shows. And I don't know if it will give me, I'm trying to avoid a copyright takedown. But we don't typically see, let me look up their open source one here, Meridian. So this is a Creative Commons thing. Um, I'm just trying to see if I can figure out what resolution this is running at. I mean, I can't tell what resolution it's at. It, it looks 1080p-ish. <laughs> um, maybe not. Maybe it's a little less than that. Because this is a 4K um, film on Netflix. It's, it's Creative Commons, though, so I can show it to you. But it is Wide Vine L1. Yeah, this is a good question from CF542. I don't, I can tell you based on, on what I see as a, as a YouTube creator. So my, my window is limited in, in, as to what the full market's looking like. But I will tell you that I hear a lot about right to repair and upgradability from my subscribers, all of you who watch right now. But in, from the standpoint of what resonates with consumers on YouTube, whenever I talk about those issues, I don't see much lift. And if I look at the review that I did of the framework laptop, let me see, when, when did I do it here? Um, so I reviewed the framework laptop on October, October of 2021. I've had 18,000 views of that video which for my laptop reviews is a bit on the lower side. So typically a Lenovo will get 25, 30,000 views, maybe double the views. And that's just any run of the milk Lenovo. So I think there's a lot of good that this provides. I just don't know if consumers are all that in, into it or all that interested in upgrading. 
especially because they look at these things as appliances now, right? All right, so let's run our speedometer test here and see how we do. See you later, James. Thanks for stopping by. And this will be important after we do the memory upgrade because I think we might see this benchmark run a little better when we swap out the RAM. And you know what? You can never go wrong buying a refurb, especially like Apple's refurbs are great, I think are really good deals because you get the full warranty. They, they usually replace the casing on them so they look pretty new. That's a pretty good score. 270, let me add this to my My list of stuff here. Yeah, that's right up there. And this is right where I would expect it to be. So we have um, a couple, I have a, on the back burner, I have a B-Link mini PC that I think has the same chip, you know, a 12th generation Intel. And we're in that, na that neighborhood on performance on this test. i5, 1240p, 270. Yeah, framework refurbs, you're not going to find, right? You probably won't see them. Everybody's got one fixes it. They refurbish their own. <laughs> so they're solid machines. I, I was very, I, my, my brother bought one. That's how we reviewed it. And he's his, and I, and I can tell you, if, my, if there's going to be a problem with something, my brother will have something that breaks because he's hard on his stuff and uh, he has not had any problems with his so far. All right, so what I want to do, where can I get the, the, the RAM specs on here, because I want to be able to demonstrate that we can upgrade this thing. Diagnostics, maybe? Yeah, I think it would be in there. Yeah, perfect. CPU memory. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick... Well, they have a, they have a memory test now on Chrome OS. 30 minutes, forget that, it takes too long. <laughs> But look at this. Check this out. This surprises me. We have nothing running right now, and it says that we have 0.76, so we have less than a gigabyte available of 8 gigs, and there's nothing loaded up right now. I've got just this, I mean, just the setting screen. There's nothing else loaded. It's got that much memory in use. That's pretty crazy. But we'll see that change in a minute when I do the memory upgrade here. All right, give me a second here. Okay. Does Framework have any kind of language that says, nope, they are not, they want you to open it up. So they even give you the, give you the screwdriver here <laughs> to do that. See you later, Gil, thanks for stopping by. I think it is limited to Chrome OS. I'm gonna find out the answer to that question before we do the review. And that noise you hear is not the fan, it's my air handler. I've got the, um, I have a split system, one of those mini splits, and my, it's noisy. I usually turn it off when I shoot a video, but when I'm doing a live stream, I like to keep it comfortable down here. I have not heard of the Gemini, but do, why don't you email me, lon at lon.tv, and remind me to look into it. I will take a look at that. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just reboot this because I'm curious if that RAM level is going to be there when we boot it back up. So let's take a look at that. Oh, Poorly Buffalo says it loads the Android VM. Yes, that could be running in the background. So let's see what happens when I do a clean reboot here. And we'll, we'll pull it back and see what happens. It's only three o'clock, it feels later. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back in. And we'll go to about diagnostics. Yeah, so it's, it's much better now. So it must've been that Android subsystem. I used a lot of RAM. So 
So we got 2.8 gigabytes of 7.55 available. Still uses up quite a bit just for the base operating system. I'm surprised that that's all they equipped this with. Yeah, I think they're starting to bloat it up now. It's starting to get a lot of stuff on board, right? And I'm guessing that if there is RAM available, they probably put stuff in there that a, a four gigabyte Chromebook may not have. And I think this is exactly the point, John. I don't think there is as much interest in the concept. But I could see, you know, like a corporate IT department um, buying these things up because they like that upgradability, right? If I, if I was a Windows shop or a Chrome OS shop and I had budget, I think I as an IT guy might like these because they have that, that cachet. All right, so what we're going to do now is we are going to upgrade the RAM on this. And there's a guide to doing so. So what we have to do is pull the power off and shut it down, which we did. And we need to unscrew the five fasteners on the back cover and then lift up the, the input cover and then we can get at the memory. So that's it, it's pretty, pretty basic. And we're gonna use the, um, the included screwdriver here to do that. And I know I'm gonna regret doing this without my magnetic mat, which I should have put down first, but we'll get by. Actually, the screws don't come out, perfect. I just don't think they come out. <clears throat> um, I generally don't test those things. Um, I can. I think to be certified, they have to meet all of that, all those requirements. And that might be one way out around the lack of biometrics on this too. It looks like these screws don't actually come out, which is good. So Now what they did say is that the touchpad is connected to the bottom. So we loosen those screws up and apparently then you can just lift the, lift the whole thing off. Yep, there it goes. Pretty simple. Yeah, it works just like the other one did if I, I recall. Oh, it's coming back on, hang on. Oh geez, it turns itself back on once you like, that's not good. How do you shut this thing down completely? I think we're gonna try to disconnect the battery when I open this up because it, it just turned itself on. Yeah, I think the battery can, oh, it says you can keep the battery connected, I don't know. I'm not so sure about that. Like, do I wanna swap out RAM when it's, uh, it's, gonna, it's on a hairpin to turn itself back on? But let me give you this look here again. And you know what I'm going to do too? I'm going to grab some footage with my phone just to kind of show the insides because they have these um, QR codes all over the place. And we'll get in a little tighter over here. So this is the, I don't know what this is. I must see the USB port. The, US, the Wi-Fi radio is right down here. This is where the memory is stored. Oh, it looks like, oh, you know what? Well, that's for the trackpad. So that's your storage. I wonder if there's another NVMe slot in here. I 
don't think there is. No, okay. It looks, that was deceiving. It looked like there was another NVMe slot, but there is not. And then this connector here is what disconnects the, um, I uh, haven't done the battery test yet. We just took it out of the box, but I will run some battery tests on it and see how it does. And Poorly Buffalo is on his Chromebook. And Roman says the Android subsystem uses a lot of RAM. That might be why we saw that, yeah. Well, we're going to upgrade this one. Now, Chris Allegretta has one, loves the hardware and upgradability. Strange battery drain issue as I have the old revision. So the battery life on Chris's is not good. I'll check with my brother and see how his is doing, because he has an early one also. But we don't have to worry about the screws, because those screws are in there. And I would agree on this one, too, that you're going to see some compatibility issues, too. Andre is interested in a 2-in-1 with 120 hertz. I have not come across one yet, but I am sure that um, Lenovo has probably got one. Yeah, if you blow the board, just replace it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I'll take a look at this and see if we can boot up some other operating systems on it. I'll check, I'll check with them and see what they say. I think they're probably going to say to people, if you want something that's more flexible, then go with the, uh, let me grab some additional people here. Here we go. I'm just going to get as much B-roll footage as I can here. You can never have enough. All right, so now, I think I might be able to just pull this battery out easily, right? So I am nervous about swapping RAM out with power connected. I'm guessing you just pull in this thing, right? There we go. All right, I disconnected the battery just to be safe. Even though they said you can do it, I don't know. It just, it just feels like it's on such a hairpin that... All right, so now the memory goes in here. And so we need to take out this module and put in the other ones that they sent over. So what we've got are two 32 gigabyte modules. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely get to the bottom of this one. I do not know the answer to this question, but I know that's gonna be driving a lot of questions because these these systems are designed to be upgradable, so if you're locked in with one operating system, that kind of is counter to it, right? Yeah, so, and John makes a good point here also, is that there's the tyranny of the default, right? Where they say nobody ever got fired for choosing Intel, is that the or IBM? Is that the is that the statement, right? Um, Roman, love, yeah, my fans don't look this good after a while. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, and I don't think this is any different. I would say the only difference is that there's probably some kind of hardware lock on using other operating systems. Is what I would say is the likely issue here. And we'll just swap this one in. And when this reboots, we will have upgraded our Chromebook to it seems to be going in very well there. There we go. That's it. It is upgraded. And then I could swap out the NVMe if I wanted to also. Um, you'd have to 
probably re-download the OS, but that's something you could do. Okay, let me connect the battery. And we'll put the keyboard back on. And then we'll flip it over and refasten the screws. Um, how much is it? Let's see how much it costs. So the one that they sent, as you saw it before I upgraded it, is $1,000. And then that includes four USB-C adapters. So that's it. Oh, here, here's some answers. Can I install Linux? So you can run Linux within Chrome OS. Can I add more memory later? Yes. I'm looking on the FAQ here. I'll pull up the FAQ page for you right now so you all can see this. Because this might answer some of the questions that undoubtedly people, including myself, have at the moment. So let's put this on DND here and I'll zoom in and show you what they, what they say. All right, so there we go. All right, so. So this is interesting. We recommend using modules from Google Chromebooks compatibility list, which can be viewed in our knowledge base. Can upgrade my CPU. They have not announced plans for a newer Chrome OS compatible main board at this time. Can I install Linux, but only on Crostini, which is built into Chrome. And this is the expansion card. So I will, I will get more information, but it looks as though if, there, if the answer to the Linux question is that you have to use Crostini, which is the built-in Linux thing, I would say it's probably not a good sign that you can put another operating system on easily. All right, let me go and finish putting the screws back in. What's nice though is they give you the screwdriver in the box and it's the only one you need. So it's got a screwdriver and a spudger on it. So after this upgrade, we will see if the RAM works on it. Now I have found in the past they've had some hardware jump, like there's been like physical hardware impediments that you have to get rid of. In fact, my, mother, my mother's old Chromebook is a good example. She's got like an old Asus and you have to like go in there. I don't know if you have to desolder something, but you got to like get rid of something to make it do that, to be able to get something else on it. And I have, I have the uh, Dragonfly Chromebook. I have it in my possession. It's under embargo, so I can't show you, show it to you yet, but I will <laughs> as soon as I am able. So I've got it here. I think the embargo lifts next week. And that one looks really interesting. I have that one and I have their other one. So you'll see all of it soon. We saw those at CES, by the way. But I have them in my possession. All right, so let's, uh, let's boot it back up. Hopefully I didn't break it. Isn't it funny, now it's, now it's not turning on. There it goes. It wanted, to be, it wanted to be plugged in. I wonder if it was. Uh... Well, that's not a good sign. Did I disconnect the display by accident? It is charging and the power light is on. Power button on here and see if I can. 
wonder if it doesn't like the RAM. We have to reseat that RAM in a minute. Let's see. All right, so that's off. Let's plug it back in. And hit the power button. Oh, there it goes. That was weird. All right. Back up. And now, let's take a look. And let's see how it does now. So here we go. And let's take a look at the RAM now. All right, so we'll go to diagnostics. Yep. Now we got a ton of RAM. Look at that. You ever seen a, a Chromebook with that much RAM on it? <laughs> so some of that RAM is reserved for video. It shared, the RAM is shared with the video, so that's why you see that. So Ryan says, I wonder why they chose. I, I think it was Google looking for them to make a Chromebook because they have, a, they have a version which is pretty much the same laptop that will run Windows and most flavors of Linux. So you could easily get that instead. And if you really wanted Chrome OS, you could put Chrome OS Flex on it. But I'll find out on that. But I think the Crostini thing, as everyone's saying here, is probably it. All right. Yeah, we're up to 333,000 now. Isn't that awesome? David Bound is here. Hello there. Can run, um, I think there is some kind of Windows thing, right? Was it Chris Allegretta that was talking about that? Somebody was talking about, talking about that. Yeah, I broke it. Time to call Linux. Linus. <laughs> But what's one of my live streams without something not working, right? All right, so let's run that benchmark again. Now that we have a lot of RAM on here. I don't think it's going to be any different, but let's see. Because now we've got it in dual channel mode. So what's funny is that when the way they ship it, it's single channel memory. So now we're dual channel. Commodore fan says, I never, could never see, well, you know what? You could, you could upgrade the you-know-what out of this thing, like rack up that Linux installation. Exactly the same score, 270. But what is going to make a difference here is going into the, um, uh, into the Steam thing. By the way, for the RAM, they sent over some crucial modules, and these are DDR4 3200s. All right. Yeah, on side tech tips. There you go. I'm like the anti, I'm like the, uh, the cheap knockoff Linus tech tips. That's me. <laughs> I am on float plane, though. You can find me on float plane. Okay, so here we are. So now I want to put this on the beta channel. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to experiment with Steam which was one of my missions today. So what we're going to do, I forgot where you choose your channel. Yes, change channel. And we're going to go to the beta stable, the beta channel. All right, and I think it needs to download. Yeah, so it's going to download another OS update. Yeah. Chris says, I have not tried to run Windows as anything other than a VM in 10 years. <laughs> Isolate the sucker, right? <laughs> All 
and I can't have all the tabs open. You know, I think, you know what, I would say there was a time in which Chrome OS did not have as big of a market, but we're seeing now a lot of these mid-range Chromebooks coming out, and people like them. And I think if you're a fan of Linux, you should be a fan of Chrome OS. And the reason why I say that is because of, here we go. By the way, YouTube still has not fixed the 55 minute problem. They have this customer support thing for creators of a certain size. I, can, I can't even tell you, like it's there, but they don't do anything. They, they try to help, but they never actually fix anything, ever. So, but yeah, we, uh, the, the streams always cut out at the 55 minute mark. Happens every time. I don't know what it is, but it's just me. I, I think it's because I stream at 4K. So, and I do it because I can. And actually I do it for a couple of reasons. One is that it's good B-roll, it's good to have it for B-roll purposes, so. Um, but yeah, it's what it is. All right, so I'm gonna look up the Steam Chrome OS page here. So they actually added some devices to the list here that were not on it before. Let me show you what I'm looking at. So Steam on Chrome OS beta, beginning with Chrome OS 108, the beta channel have an early beta quality version of Steam. And they're in active development. And you can see all the support. So if you have one of these Chromebooks now, and it's actually a good number of them on here, just remember, though, that you're not going to see the best performance out of these because they're all you know, running with Intel GPUs. And I've got to go to Chrome Flags and set Borealis enabled to enabled. Okay. Huh. I guess they call this Borealis. External storage is not supported. That's going to be not a deal breaker, but that's going to limit us a bit. And here's some games that they say work. And we'll try a few also to see what, uh, what works and what doesn't. Steam Play will run a Linux version of the game if it exists. And I think Proton is part of this. So there you go. All right. So we need to restart to go into the beta channel, which we will do now. All right. Yeah, 4K is when, when it went downhill <laughs> for my channel. <laughs> but you know what? I got six gigabits of upstream bandwidth. Gosh darn it, I'm going to send 4K up. And I, my, um, my bit rate is about 30 megabits per second. That's what I send up. So it's not like crazy. Well, it is, but not like super crazy. Are frameworks eGPU compatible? I think on the Windows side, but not on Chrome OS. Um, let's see, I'm missing a whole bunch of stuff here. Uh, do, 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 do. It, it used to be impossible to sell people I knew on Chromebooks because they would always ask, can it run Office? Yeah, and I, I need to go back in and look at that. Ha, have they done a lot with Microsoft Office on the, as I'm guessing it's going to run on the browser or the Android side? And there were features missing. But really the way to look at this is that if you're familiar with the regular framework, then this is the Chrome OS version of it. And it's not any different than, than that one. All right. So to enable 
enable this, oops, we have to go into the browser. You know what I want to do real quick? I just want to see, from, for the standpoint of my review that I'm going to do later, um, what I want to do is see if this has any impact on the performance. Oh, my, I turned the Wi-Fi off. That's weird. Just give me a second here. I've got to get onto the Wi-Fi. That's weird. So the Wi-Fi is flaky. We're on the beta channel, so this is where all the flakiness begins. So it's weird. The, the browser works, but it says the Wi-Fi isn't connected. That's funny. Hang on. Let's see. Lawn.tv. Nope, no internet. So this might end really quickly here. <laughs> the Wi-Fi doesn't seem to want to work on the beta channel. Wi-Fi is turned off. Let's turn Wi-Fi on. It's still off. So we may have to power wash maybe and reboot from scratch. Let me reboot. <laughs> Carol says they need Outlook, not Office. Yeah, I, got, I had a few at my old job. They were Outlook holdouts. They had to have their email in folders because we had switched to Google at my old job. Um, Oh, now it's working. That was weird. Yeah, the Wi-Fi did not connect initially, and now it has. Okay, so let's see if it stays connected. It's the perils of the, of the beta channel. But sometimes I found that when you go to the beta channel, there's a bit of a um, performance hit. So let's see if we have a performance hit on it. Keyboard not connected, press F1. Or strike F1 to continue, right? Strike any key. I used to love how the PCs used to say strike a key. And my Apple would say press a key. Now, do you ever find anything? I, I've been meaning to do, to do that. My wife doesn't let me. They once had an electronics recycling day, and they, somebody had tossed out a bunch of like old Apple stuff, and they wouldn't let me take it. I was, I was heartbroken. Well, it was privacy. I was like, no, there's no privacy. It's all floppy disk. So let me have it. I'll take it. Yeah, so you see that? Let me test that again. It's, it's plus or minus 21. Um, the beta channel often has some performance issues. The fan is running pretty hard on it right now, too. Where is the any key? What's that? There's like, a, like an old text file that used to go around about like adventures in tech support where like people were using the CD-ROM as the cup holder, right? Um, Okay, so it's about where we were before. But the fan is cranking on this sucker right now. Let's go to the diagnostics and see what's driving it. Oh, now it just switched off. Yes, yeah, so you'll find when you put it into the beta channel, you'll see some odd behaviors because they're, you know, it, it'll give you whatever version is currently out there and they usually do some wacky stuff. All right, so what we need to do next, according to our instructions, is go over to Chrome Flags. And we need to look for Borealis. Now, which one is it? Because oh, Borealis enabled, we're going to set this to enabled. And then we have to restart. That was quick. Maybe I'll restart it like again <laughs> for good measure. Yeah, I mean, that's where Madonna got the, the song from, right? Okay, so let me pop back into my test account here. Okay, so now we are back. And apparently, 
steam should just magically appear. Yep, look at that, right here. So let's log in. Oh, welcome to Steam. Oh, it's actually an interface to this. Hang on. Let's do a... So this is like installing very similar to um, how the Linux thing installs. So it's going to download Steam. So it actually has a, like a real interface to it. No, Weeb, you are the coolest for saying that about me. <laughs> My kids don't think that's, uh, that's the case. So Commodore has found some good stuff. All right, we are all set. So let's launch Steam. And this is familiar, right? But, you know, before you had to go through all this command line stuff to get it all working. So this is a whole different... Uh, much quicker way to get it up and running. And I've got my Xbox controller that will pair up with it. So I don't know. I don't think it will because I don't even think Linux, Christini Linux works on Chrome OS Flex. If I'm mistaken, let me know, but I don't think it does. So the Calamaris installer, what is that? So no, this is, this is something different. This is like, um, so Google and, and Steam are, are collab, or yeah, uh, Valve are collaborating on this. So this is gonna be, I would, I would venture to say this probably sits in a separate container than the, um, a separate container versus Christini. So the, they're containerizing as much as they can inside of this Chrome OS architecture, which in of itself is, I think, a neat idea, right? Because it, it further isolates everything. You don't have a performance hit for doing it. And I think it ultimately makes the system more secure. So I'm logging into my, my Steam account here. Hang on, let me get this centered right. There we go. I like this. They have now like a passwordless way to get into Steam. So you don't have to type your password in. You can just use your phone. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I'm sure that's what they did there. All right, so there we go. So now we're in. Okay, so, and I, and I don't know if, they're, if they've got the Proton layer going on this or not. But we'll find out. All right. And let me grab some more B-roll here. And we're just going to go for the gusto. I think I, think I want to put, well, let's put my favorite game on here and see how it, how it does. This will take a few minutes to download, but I got time. You got time. And so it just works like, uh, like Steam does. Oh, it does have Proton. Proton 7 is downloading right now. So I don't. I did not connect Ethernet. Um, I probably should have. But this won't take too long. It's only how many gigabytes is it? It's only two point seven gigabytes. It's not that big. But this game I know is certified on the Steam Deck, so I think it will probably do okay here. And it's a good Wi-Fi test. So we're pulling down. Um, 30, 
8 megabytes per second. This will probably top off at around about 60 megabytes per second off the Wi-Fi here. But we're hitting half a gigabit off the Wi-Fi, which is pretty good. Oh, so I guess you can, okay, so I didn't realize that. You can enable Chrome, uh, Linux on Chrome OS Flex. So I would imagine once this is out of beta, it will, it will work. So I don't know what these are. They could just be straight up containers. A lot of it's isolated from us users, right? And the screen is, everything on this is easy to replace. Very much so. And I would believe these operate in separate sandboxes. And Commodore fan, yeah, they have a lab in New York City that I'm trying to get into where apparently they, they uh, work on a lot of this stuff. And I think this is the case. I think this should support, we'll find out very quickly how it does with the hardware acceleration, but I think it will. This game, we'll probably have to turn down the resolution, but I think it should run, we should be able to get 30 frames per second out of it if it does support that. What games are good on the Mac M1? You know, that's a good question. I don't have a good answer for you on that, believe it or not. I don't do much gaming on my M1. I've been playing, um, I've been playing XCOM on my M2, which will be very, you know, close to the performance you'll see on the M1. So what I would do is if you have, if you have Steam, I would download Steam and see what's available. And all of it will run. And some of it will actually run better than you'd expect even the Intel-based games. So I'm getting 30 frames per second on my M2 with, um, with XCOM 2, which is a really fun strategy game. Very tough strategy game, actually. Chris McDonough wants that Apple 2GS. You know, we're going to do a, 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 a I'm going to get a new power supply for it. I think we'll do a little video about that. Oh, yeah, now it's downloading 12 gigabytes. So there must have been some preload that it had to do. But it's coming in, yeah, we're doing about 500, uh, you know, 53 megabytes per second peak. So that's about half a gigabit off the Wi-Fi. And I don't have my 6E access point down here, so this would have gone a little faster on that, but. A few seconds, that's right, too long. Extra seconds, too long, gonna connect to ethernet. But, and that's the other thing, um, game streaming is also a good idea on the Mac M1 and on here, because this will do game streaming just as well. Yeah, Mac source ports, that's a good resource. Well, that's cool, I never even seen that before. It might be a good video to do, Mac source ports. Mac source ports, oh, that's cool. Signed and notarized builds of source ports of your favorite games, working on both Apple Silicon. Oh, that's cool. Gothic 2, Nanosaur, Buildy Frontier. Oh, he's like older Mac games, Doom 64. Aliens vs. Predator, Half-Life. Oh, these are all source engine games. Is that what you're saying? Catacomb, Armageddon. Oh, that's cool. Duke Nukem 2, awesome. Yeah, neat. Oh boy, there's a lot of stuff on there. I'll have to check that out. Hexen. My roommates and I in college were into Hexen. That was a fun game. One of them was playing, it, playing with headphones on, and I guess there's some kind of like chant in the background that scared the crap out of them. I remember that. We were all like, whoa, it's so cool. Ultima 7. Oh, that's neat. Mac source ports. All right, we're getting there. The fan is really running on it right now.
Hey, William Wilkinson is joining us. Glad to see the job is working out. That's a lot of pizza, $247 worth of pizza. I could go for some pizza right now to believe it or not. I'm getting hungry. Ah, I see. It's games where the engine source is available, so they ported it to M1. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm going to play I'm going to that's going to be my weekend project, I think. Is that. All right. So, we are installing and finalizing. All right. So, let me pair the controller up first before we do anything else. So, I'm going to turn this on and hit my pair button. And generally, I found controller um, pairing to be a very benign activity. So here it is, Xbox wireless controller. And we are well, it thinks it paired with it, but it doesn't seem to have <laughs> been a reciprocated. Uh... Yeah, the controller says it says it's paired, but the controller is like, well, I don't think I'm paired. Let's try that again. Now the controller is like stuck blinking in limbo here. This is the story of my life. Whenever I do a live stream, things just go south like this. All right, let's try that again. Let's forget it. Bluetooth. All right, we're back to pair new device. If not, I'll just plug it in directly. <clears throat> All right, Xbox wireless controller pairing. That's weird. So it claims it's connected, but the controller doesn't think it's connected. You gotta love this, right? Like this is how this is like how things roll in my house. All right, so let's just go ahead and see what happens with the game here. So we're gonna play No Man's Sky. They have they have a VR. I haven't tried the new VR mode yet. I, I played it previously on prior versions, but not the new version. So I'm eager to check that out. Well, there you go. Some XP action going there. That should be fun. Right now we are processing Vulcan shaders. Commodore says I may have to go wire. Yeah, I think we may have to hook up on a, on a wire. But the good news is we have a, oh, it's USB-C too. We have USB-C capability here. So we can wire up that way. So right now it's just processing the shaders. Yeah, I'm really, I can really go for some pizza right now. We used to have in my, speaking of Pizza Hut, my college had a late night snack place. It was called the Hawk's Nest. And so the cafeteria would close at 6.50 p.m., not 7. And then I had late classes all the time that would start at 4. I, I stacked up my classes, so I would do like those once a week classes. So I had, um, more often than not, I would have classes that would end at like nine o'clock, 7.30, so I used to go to the Hawk's Nest and they had personal pan pizza, Pizza Hut personal pan pizzas. It was like a franchise deal. And they were not good at the time, but I remember, like I think of those pizzas with fondness because it reminded me, right? So, and the guy had this big pizza knife and he would take them out of the oven and put them in a box. <laughs> that was his, uh, that was his thing. And William's working there, and he's, he's craving pizza. Yeah, we, my Pizza Hut closed down where I was. And they used to do this thing for reading if you read a lot. Like, there was, like, a, a coupon for if you read all your reading at school or whatever, you get Pizza Hut. My Pizza Hut also had Super Dodgeball, an arcade cabinet. A Super Dodgeball arcade cabinet. I used to love playing that game there. There you go. Pizza and ice cream. Problem is, at my age now, it's not good for me. Processing Vulcan shaders is a t-shirt. Yeah, I, that's a good idea. So, yeah, it's doing all the pre-processing here. So we'll let that do its thing. 
Yes, this is a 6e. How about we all just get together for pizza? And you just plug them right in. Yeah, we'll see what happens here. We'll get it, we'll get it going. And I've got about another half hour before I gotta take off here, so just be, be advised. My goodness, I can see myself doing that. I can see myself doing that. Well, it's funny, the last like three years, I don't know if my metabolism, I, I'm not eating any differently, but I'm putting on weight. So I think my age is catching up with me. Oh, and now it just, so you know what's funny is the controller doesn't think it's paired. Yeah, look, it's going bonkers. Yeah, it's all confused. Yeah, we'll, we'll wire this in. Just gotta find a cable. Oh, it's been a long week. Hey, have you all been watching that new Star Trek show, Star Trek, Star Trek Picard season, season three? I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I, I mean, I like the, I, you know, for me, I'm like one of these people, if it's anything Star Trek or Star Wars, I don't, I, you know, like I'm pretty happy with it, but I'm, I'm pleased with, uh, with, with what they're doing in season three. <laughs> I ignore anyone that tells me that. I agree. I like my chocolate ice cream. So what is to eat if I wanted to? I, I would eat some pizza right now. My go-to though, like for takeout food is Chinese food. I can't get enough of that. I love Chinese food. Oh boy, those meat stuff. Yeah, the meat lover's pizza. Stuffed crust. Load it up. I've never been to Pizza Inn, no. Um, Chris Allegretto though, does have a Pizza Hut nearby. I used to like their pasta for some reason too, like their meat sauce. But you know what? Um, we have a great pizza place. Like not even, so for me to have something within pr practical walking distance is a big deal. But we have this little uh, pizza place in our little village downtown and they, they imported this, um, this ceramic wood-fired oven from Italy, and they make really good pizza. It's like, it's delicious. It's really, really good. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of there. Like, I, I like Strange New Worlds. I think they, they dialed that in really well. Um, they, they, didn't, they actually did really well on the effects with that. I feel like the production value is greater. And season two of Picard, I just didn't, connect with that one at all. First season, I, I was pretty good with the first half of it. But this new season of Picard, I think, they, I think they did the right thing, which was to bring, so far, they're bringing most of the cast back, at least as far as where I'm at with it. And, and that, that's working better for me. They actually have a good backstory on how like Picard season one set up. And that in of itself would have been a great series to to the, there, there's so much of the, I read the book. There was a, I think the audio books, there was such a great audio book on kind of the prequel for how Picard got to where he ended up. There's some good pizza. Connecticut has really good pizza, I gotta tell you. And you know what, if you've never had Pepe's in New Haven, you gotta try it. And the bar is moving, it's just moving very slowly. <laughs> so hopefully that means it's gonna be nice and quick when it, when it runs. But yeah, yeah, I think you'll like the episode. I was, I was digging it. it they, and they've been packing a lot in, but it was, a, it was good. I think you can watch season three of Picard without any issues. Like you don't have to look at it, watch any of the other stuff really. All right, looks like we got a little bit of a squished screen, but we'll fix that. Nancy Pelosi is 80 plus and eats ice cream daily. Well, there you go. I'm going to do that too. I'm going to eat my ice cream every day. Uh, my grandfather used to have, used to eat all sorts of stuff. All right, the controller works. All right, so I'm, I'm in the middle of their um, community thing, so let's try that. And I haven't done anything to the settings yet. Oh my gosh, so have you seen the, the, the Mandalorian has a new season? This is like, for me as a nerd, has been a great week. Um, 
So like, can you imagine me as a kid to know at age 46, I would have my own TV show doing technology for a living. And then at night, on, Thursday, on Wednesday night, you get, a, you get a new Star Wars thing. And then the following night, Star Trek The Next Generation. Like, like that, that to me is just, I'm living the dream. So, but The Mandalorian um, was a lot of fun last night. That's the new season. So if you haven't checked that out, it was great. We should do a pizza show, Chris Allegretta. You're not that far from me. They have a Pepe's Pizza at um, Mohegan Sun. I, I don't think they have one at Foxwoods, but I know there's one at Mohegan Sun. And Orville was great. Yeah, it's funny how that one started. So, and I, I'll be honest, I kind of liked season one of Picard myself. I, I didn't, I wasn't as upset about it as a lot of other people were. Season two, I watched, I was entertained, but it didn't seem to line up with anything. It was a weird, and even weirder is that I could have taken season two if it got us somewhere. And it looks like they just kind of said, you know what, let's just hit the reset button and get this right. And so season two, I think you could, you could probably skip. Yasso frozen yogurt sticks. I'll look into that. All right, let me go in and adjust some settings here before we do anything. The good news is it's actually running. Um, display and graphics. So it's at 1080 right now, and I need to find, I'm going to go down to, I think this is 1440 by 960, eh, that's not right. I want to get something that's divisible by, yeah, that looks better. Okay, 1600 by 900. And then the quality level. Yes, it's on standard all the way through here. Wow, that's, that's not bad. That's, this is not streaming. This is running on device. So now, let's go into settings. And I'm going to put on my um, frame rate counter here. Are we going to get it, though? Yes, we got it. Perfect. So this is running at about 30, around 30, which honestly is not bad. So hang on a second. I'm just going to make some notes here. I mean, this is good. I mean, we are on a Chromebook running Steam. I should record this, shouldn't I? Let's, let's do that real quick here. So we're going to run around here. And we're going to get into the spaceship. I got to get off this planet because this planet is like infested with sentinels. And they really don't like me. Every time I, I get out of my ship, they come after me. And let's turn the volume up here, make sure we got sound. We have sound. I have the in controls inverted here, I have to adjust that, but. All right, so let's go to this planet over here. You know what I'm going to do here, too? Let me just adjust my controls and invert them. And we're about 45 frames per second right here. So this isn't bad. Yeah, now there's a big dispute in Connecticut between Pepe's and Sally's Pizza. So you have to, like, choose a side. Yeah, Man Mando was great. Loved it. Loved it. I love Stargate, too. That's my, I love, I want them to do that. They've got to come up with a new Stargate, for sure. But there's so much good stuff to watch. I finally watched Top Gun Maverick, by the way. I love that, too. 
you know, it seems like the older I get, the more I don't want to see anything new. Just, just make new versions of the old stuff for that. I <laughs> and somehow Tom Cruise doesn't age. I, I'd like to know what he's, uh, what he's doing there. Because, like, my wife and I watched it, and I was like, I can't believe how this guy doesn't age. Like, what is he, what is he doing to himself? Oh, right. This is a, landed in the middle of a storm here. Now, just imagine what you're seeing here, but in VR, and that's how it is. It's that good. Yes, yeah, so there's a storm raging on the planet right now, which is why it's all fuzzy like this. But it's, you know, it's doing about 30 to 40 frames per second. So it's pretty good. You know, I, I will probably install Red Dead Redemption 2 on here just because I'd like to see how that, how that does. But this is, this is good. Now, is this the planet we were just at? I don't think so. Yeah, this is where I want to go. This planet has the best uh, looking. So we'll go there. Yeah, the fans are blowing pretty good here. And I got to try these Yasso sticks. You got me curious about that. And so, you know what I do is I actually do record, um, so I've been recording, so I hit the record button and grab stuff that I know I'm going to use. Yeah, sometimes it does, and actually the other challenge I run into is that I have the resolution, but when I stream at 4K, it usually makes a WebM file, so I have to go in and convert that, so I try to, I'll, I'll do, I'll hit the record button when I'm, when I'm here. All right, so let's see what happens. Yeah, Tom Cruise does his own. He's like he's he's is he over? I think he's over sixty, right? He's almost like he's almost going to be ready for Social Security and Medicare. Guy's amazing. All right, so here we go, and we're at uh, thirty-five frames per second right now. That's what I love about this game. Like, you just fly to a planet and you can just get out. And when they do these community expeditions, there's always some crazy stuff going on. Um, So I'm sorry, this guy got in the middle of my mining beam there. Oh, well. Um, oops, just got bit by a thing. Yes, yeah, so this is about 37 right now. And this is, this is local, so we're not streaming this. It's very playable. And, and I, I don't think you would have this without the Steam Deck. Because what makes the Steam Deck run this game like this is what's making this run it. I mean, it, this is great. And this is a Chromebook. Let 
Where did my spaceship go? Here it is. Actually, where did my spaceship go? Is it up there? What's up? How did I get all the way up there? Okay. So Chuck Smith, yeah, I think you can skip um, season two if you're not into it. I would say you probably could do that. There, you will see a few characters that you'll be like, or one character, you'll be like, who is that? But um, if you saw season one, I don't think you need to see season two. All right, so let's take it from here. Going to get a few more. My camera got blurry when I hit the planet's surface, so. I should have enough for that game. <laughs> yeah, this happens to me a lot. Where did I park my car? It's one of my favorite lines of Star Trek IV. Don't forget where we parked, right? When they get out of their cloaked, cloaked ship there. And now this is true. We do have a ton of memory. So, and you do need, and by the way, this, this is not the performance we would have right now if we didn't have the dual channel memory on board either, which is not its default. All right, so somebody wanted me to try to go into 720p. See if we can push it to, uh, let's see, 1280 by 800. Let's see, 1366 by 768. Let's see what that gets us. Yeah, so now we're at about 50. So you could definitely squeeze more FPS out of this. But yeah, it's about 50. So I would say, you know, it's, it's like the equivalent for what you would see on Windows with XE graphics. And the fan is blowing pretty hard here. All right, let's see what else I have in my library here. How is your gameplay experience? They have a little Google form to uh, report. So we'll come back to that maybe. Um, well, you know what? Let's try Red Dead Redemption 2. It's going to take a while to download, but I'm, you know, I'm going to need to put it on anyhow. But No Man's Sky runs great. It's going to use up almost all of my disk space. <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll see what we can get out of that one. Um, yeah, a lot of planets have been charted, although I, I still mostly encounter planets that I have not, that have not been discovered by other players. And me too, I love, I love that, I love the, the, all of that game I love. It's just great. Yeah, I think you could probably handle some taxes. All right, so let's get this thing installed here. I, I bet you this is going to take a while to download because this is a huge game. Let's see how fast my connection will get us here. Yeah, it's going to be about 45 minutes. That's going to take a while. But I think you know, that gives us a good idea of what, what we can expect out of this. So old school games will work fine. You know what we could do? We could grab Half-Life. Um, why don't we do, we could do, we actually could do Doom Eternal. That one's pretty big too, though. I have Doom, Doom Eternal on my, my list here. I, well, I got Doom VF, is that the VR version of Doom? I think it is. I never even played that. See, I got so many things I never even played before. 
Yeah, I suppose I could hook up Ethernet. I gotta find my adapter. Let me see what I've got in the in the hopper here. So I have a I need to find my two and a half gigabit adapter, which I have somewhere. Here it is. And then I gotta run my cable. Let me go grab the Ethernet here. That'll certainly speed it up. So we are currently downloading at, so we're doing about 56 mega, so we're actually coming down at a pretty good clip here, but it's still gonna take 35 minutes. So let me see if I can find or plug in my ethernet cable here. So I can at least get two and a half gigabits on that one. Oh, you know what actually would be a fun test? I have a 10 gig adapter, and let's see if this will work at 10 gigabits. So I've got a 10 gig adapter here. This might, because if this does have support for, I just don't know if Thunderbolt is supported. Controller is like totally glitching my system here. Um, let's see. All right, so we've plugged in this. Peripheral performance may be limited. Charging, changing your access. Oh, okay, so let's, it's asking for, okay. So device access. Data access protection. Some devices require you to disable data access protection. Okay, so I'm going to disable this. And let's plug it back in and see what happens. So here we go. This could very well be like the ultimate Chromebook from a performance standpoint. All right, so I plug this in. Let's see if we get a... A link. Okay, we got linked. It's at 10 gigs. At least the lights are indicating that. So let me go into our network settings. I'm not sure where they keep network settings. Maybe in their device. Yeah, device. Files, print and scan. Ethernet. Network. Now it doesn't tell me what speed it is connected at, but if we go, well, I could do something. I could just go and do a quick speedtest.net test and see what we get, right? All right, let me tell you, I'll tell you what this is when it runs. All right, so downstream, I'm blocking my IP address. I'm getting three gigabits downstream, but we're also downloading that game at the same time. So it looks like it's doing about two and a half, even though I've got a 10 gig adapter in there. But I'm also downloading that game at the same time, so I don't know what's Maybe it's just not getting the, the full 10 gig performance here. Oh, wait a minute. So Steam now is downloading. Yeah, now we're crossing the gigabit threshold here. See you later, Commodore fan. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, 3D Mark should work on it too. Yeah, I'll download that. See if that, we can get that working. And yeah, we could probably try to do something retro on here too. Oh, 
looks like we're topping out at around 102. Let me go over to the diagnostics because it doesn't tell me what, um, what the speed I am connected at, but it looks like we're getting north of a gigabit and the adapter here has two green lights, so when it, it's connected that way, it's indicating, you know, that, that indicates that we're at, we've got a 10 gig link. But it's true, it could be that steam is just kind of eating up some of the network uh, or throttling the network. Um, let's go back a notch here. You know what's funny? Is that it doesn't give me the link speed on the ethernet. So I'm not sure how to, uh, how to adjust for that, but I have not played Stray. Do you think my kids would like Stray? I think it's about a cat, right? My, my daughter loves cats, but I don't know if it's too sad for her or not. So the GPU is an Intel Iris XE. And in my experience, that's enough at 720p to maybe squeeze about 30 frames per second out of Red Dead. And given what I'm seeing here, I think it's probably going to do it. That's my gut on this. But yeah, this thing's working pretty, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. I'm going to turn the Wi-Fi off and just force it on the Ethernet and see if that makes any difference here on our download speeds. I'm pretty sure it's sticking to the, uh, the Ethernet. But yeah, that 10 gig adapter, a Thunderbolt adapter, just plugged right in and worked. which is pretty crazy. So I could go to the terminal, except I haven't installed Linux on this yet. So maybe we'll do that while it's, while it's doing that. So type magic for network card. All right, we'll give that a shot. Good news is we got plenty of RAM on this thing. <laughs> but I, I kind of like this idea of containerizing Steam. And I'm not sure how it manages storage, but we'll find out, won't we? You know, I, I've never watched his review. I will have to check that out and see what we've got. All right, so we're here. Now you said I can type in magic. Command not found. Uh, let's see, ETH tool. Let's say ETH tool. Nope, that's not on here either. Did our package list here too. But I'm pretty, uh, pretty optimistic about this one. Yeah, help. <laughs> so we're trying to just see if we can, um, we're trying to see if we can figure out what link speed we're connecting at.
So I'm just trying to get a sense as to whether or not we're getting, I, I think we're getting about two and a half gigabits, even though I'm connected to a 10 gig adapter. So it says it's on here, but it doesn't actually run. So they must have it buried somewhere in the app is the thing to use. Okay, I'll try that. IPA. Yeah, you know, I think we're in a container, so I don't think it's going to tell us. Yeah, it's all, it's got its own private local IP. And I'm not getting any link speed on it. Um, I could do, actually, sudo apt install iperf3, maybe? Yeah, I could do iperf. Let's try that. All right, so let me get my iperf going on my Mac in the other side of the room. And then we'll see what kind of speed we get with that. And that'll give us an idea. I'm just waiting for my Mac to come back up here. And let's go into terminal. All right, so there we go. Let's do a quick iperf. And let's see what we get. So I'm getting 1.5 gigabits here, but let me do the slash P5. Yeah, it looks like it's only doing about a gigabit and a half. So I'm not sure what's restricting that. It could be the container restricting it. Yeah, I tried ETH tool, it doesn't work. So 1.5 gigabits is the max I'm getting out of this. Although I suspect there could be some limitations on the, the, the container's virtual network connection. So D message, pipe, grep, Eno1, grep, up. All right, let's see what we get there, nothing. Nothing, or maybe it's EN01, Let's try that. Nothing. Yeah, it could just be we're stuck in the container. But that gave us something to do while we wait another seven minutes here. <laughs> Almost done. And while it's doing that, I need to find a new way to connect my controller to the computer. I've got this short cable here, maybe I'll just use that. Yeah, it'll work. <clears throat> yeah, Steam is grabbing some of the bandwidth, but I'm at, I have 10 gigs, so I should see... So Steam is only downloading at... Right now, it's about 1.5 gigabits. So we're getting about three, which is what we saw before. So it's, it's, we should be getting a lot more if, if the 10 gig was working. Oh, I see, so maybe I have, okay, so let's try that. So D message, rep, I think it's e ETH zero. All it says is that it's up and running. <laughs> Let's try one and see if that's different. Nope. 
And we go into ifconfig and see what we have there. And if config is not there. But we're almost there, six minutes left. But yeah, we're pulling down about a gigabit and a half, or 1.25 gigabits. But I suspect that because this, contain this container is kind of isolated from the, the actual hardware interface, the metal interface, if you will. But what I'll do, I will look at some retro stuff. And I think what I might do is get, um, I'll load up like Afterburner or some fun Sega arcade title and see what we get there. Right, let's try Net Tools. And it says it's already on the, the, on the latest version. I wonder if it's hiding in some directory. So let's see, here's another, another, another one. IP slash A grep QLEN. That didn't work either. IP, yeah, no one has a. <laughs> I'll figure it out. Maybe, we'll wait. Maybe what I'll do is I'll reboot it fresh and see what I can push it to. But the fact is that this Thunderbolt this Thunderbolt Ethernet is working. And it's working faster than a gigabit. So you know what I'll do? Let me go into the room just to make sure, because my I can't remember what the lights always align with there. So oh you know what? No, yeah, it's it it so the adapter is negotiated a 10 gig link. So it's talking at 10. It's definitely running at 10, but I'm not sure why we're not getting more than that. Let me reverse this too. So we're getting about 1.5 gigabits per second. And I think that's a downstream. So let me reverse the connection, which is dash R. Yeah, it's not getting, I mean, it's doing fine, but it's not as, yeah, that might, yeah, so this, this is certainly interfering, but I, I feel like a gigabit and a half is, is maybe where it's locked in, given the container limitations. Oh, IPA. All right, let's try that. IPA. All right, so IPA. Yeah, this has got like a virtual IP address which is locked to the container. Yeah, no, I didn't do the Amazon today just because there's no, um, not, this thing is not sold on Amazon and people get confused. I guess I, some of the peripherals I probably could have talked about, I guess, but, but yeah, this is not an Amazon offered device. So we stuck to YouTube on this one. So here's, here's who's, a betting, who's a betting man or woman on this one? Ryan says, I'll be lucky. You'll be lucky to get seven. I, I think we're going to do better than seven. I do, I do think that. And we got two minutes left, and then we're going to run this real quick, and then I got to run because my daughter's coming home in a little bit. But I'm getting, the speed that I'm seeing here is about what I typically see on Steam when I'm downloading stuff. I've never seen Steam get me beyond two gigabits. I'm going to turn off. Yeah, it was only throttling while streaming, which I'm not doing. But it's connecting to Charlotte. And I wonder if New York, if there is a New York location, might be better. For me, 
I'm wondering if they do this based on peering. I'm going to switch to the New York one and see, what, see if that bumps us up any faster. Yeah, we're still running it around the same speed. I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm getting a gigabit down right now. Actually, a little bit more than a gigabit. About a gigabit and a quarter. Ah, it's 1,000 QLAN. I wonder if they limit that um, in the container. Because we're definitely getting more than a gigabit here. All right, 30 seconds. I have not, although did I read correctly that Steam is going to start doing LAN installs? Did I read that right? Which might be helpful. So, the, so normally what I do is I plug in my external hard drive where I've got this stuff downloaded already, except Steam is not yet working with, with that. So that's why we're, we're doing that. Okay, so 1,000 QLEN is one gigabit. So I'm guessing that they limit the container to that speed. But I don't know. Okay, guess what? It's done. So who cares? We'll go and play the game. <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna run this at a low resolution, obviously, like this, the equivalent of like 720p. And hopefully, I don't have to remember my account for this Rockstar thing. This is the Windows version, so I'm guessing it's using the Proton layer. And again, without this Proton, none of this stuff would work. So you think about like what the Steam Deck is bringing for Steam. It's more than just the Steam Deck. It's bringing you know, Windows gaming compatibility across to other Linux-based devices like Chromebooks. And we're processing the Vulkan shaders again. That's right, 1,000 QLON. That's right. All right, so we are just waiting for this uh, thing to finish up. Well, that's a good suggestion, maybe to use the, um, the Android iPerf. We'll try that, too. Yeah, I got to play around with that a little bit more. But, yeah, so far, this thing's feeling like the, like the ultimate Chromebook, right? Like, it's, it's doing stuff that Chromebooks don't typically do. So what have we done so far? We've run, we ran No Man's Sky at, like, a decent frame rate. We got Steam going, obviously. We got memory. We were able to upgrade the memory. So it's uh, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. You know what's funny? Every day... Um, It's funny, is every day I get emails from these scammers trying to take over my channel. I just got one a minute ago. Speaking of Stray, it's like they pretend to be from the company that makes Stray. Pretty wild. What are Vulcan shaders? I don't know. I think they are, like they're pre-processing some, the, some of the graphics. So it's like, it's like lighting, right? Okay, so in the, in the new Steam client beta, it'll do net, local network first. That makes a lot of sense. This does not have biometric login. So that's one thing it does not have. And I gotta make a note of that in my notes here. No biometric login. All right, here we go. We're really pushing this little guy a lot. <laughs> But I don't think I've ever used a Chromebook that, that does as much as this one does. Like, honestly, like, do you feel like we're on a Chromebook now? I mean, you know, we're, we've got our Linux thing going. We've got Steam running in its own container. It's like, uh, it's like a dream. Like, this is the future of Chrome OS. Let 
they're pretty serious about this gaming thing, I think, huh? All right, please update your driver. Okay, that's not a good sign. But it's still loading. And it looks like it's running in a window right now, but we'll fix that. All right, let's see. It's kind of locked up. Yeah. Well, that's a shame, because this does run on the Steam Deck. But we'll, we'll let it sit here for a minute and see if it see if it comes out of it. See, we're still live here. It's not the stream is not frozen. The game is. Although I think it's processing something because it went. It was at 99 FPS and now it's back. Now it's down to 26. And the fan is is going up and down. So there's something. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's the vibe I'm feeling here. It feels a little more like a regular laptop. And I've been looking so. I've been looking at Chromebooks. Oh, look at it. It's still going. I've been looking at Chromebooks since the beginning. So 2014 or whenever they first came out, you can find on my playlist, if you go to lon.tv slash Chrome OS and go all the way down to the bottom, I have a review of the Chromebook 11. So you're going to uh, run into Here, a I'll put little this up. bit of uh, speed bumps as you're using it. You're not going to see the same kind of performance you get out of a more Here's a, young, a younger lawn. Do I look the same? You tell me. Um, but this was the, the first uh, Chromebook that I reviewed. This was the HP Chromebook 11. It was ARM-based. I don't think it was USB-C. I think it was like a proprietary connector. But that's what it looked like. It was a cute little machine. And it was, it was ARM. But it performed pretty well. But all it did was the web browser. That's all you could do on it was that. All right, so here we are. Let's go into settings here and make some adjustments. You probably want to see this more than the other thing. Um, graphics. And I got a jet in like 15 minutes because kids are home and I'm going to be needed. All right, so let's go to, to 720p. Can we go full screen? Can we do it? Yes, OK. All right, so we're, we're at 720p. I'm not going to push it here too much, right? The quality preset we're going to keep low. I don't know why it sets that. So low, off, low, 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 off. Oops. Like we're just going to put everything on the lowest possible setting. All right. We have to restart the game here. Okay. You want to save these settings. And we have to restart the game. All right. So we got to go back out. Let's just restart the game. It only take an hour to get back into it, but <laughs> All right, so let's go back and play it again here. By the way, that original Chromebook review has had 25,000 views nine years ago. So it's come a long way in nine years. OK. All right. And we're going to get a little driver warning there, but I think we're going to be okay here. And then after this, I got to run. It's going to, I'm going to have to feed children soon, or a child. One child is going to be home. The other one is going to a, to a little pizza party. And the little one is going to be very upset that she can't go to the pizza party the older one is going to. All right. Speaking of pizza, right? All right, hang on a second. Yep. Almost. What's up? Okay. 
No, I don't want to quit the desktop. I want to play the game. One second. We were so close. I may have to like reboot. Let's try this again. Yeah, Roman makes a good point here, too. I bet you they would have preferred to do that, right? Because they didn't do Intel right away. They took a while to get to, to the Intel part. All right, so I'll hit OK here. I'm getting like an activation warning, so I wonder if something is still resonant. Oh, there it goes. Oh, now it's in like a little corner of the screen, though. What the heck? All right, hang on. That, that I think, is fixable. This is the kind of stuff you run into on these things. Yeah, the boss is, uh, the boss is telling me it's almost time to blow the whistle. All right, so let's go back to uh, settings again. And let's see if we can get this. Uh... See, it thinks it's full screen, but it's not. I'm going to see if I can force it back to full screen here and see if that, come on, give us full screen. If not, we're going to have to reboot. There we go. All right. Yeah, so a little flaky, right? That's to be expected. It's not, you know, this is not a supported, <laughs> a supported resolution or a supported game. Yeah, this whole Proton thing is magic to me. I don't even know how it, how it works. It's amazing. And what's, what's crazy is that like, when, you, when you're on the Steam Deck, for example, and you run that thing that lets you install the Epic games, the fact that they work is incredible. Like, it, it just, like the Windows games just boot up. All right. Ooh. Okay, who said it was going to be... Yeah, we're not doing so great here. So I was expecting a little more, but I'm going to go back in and check the settings here to see if there's something afoot. So right now we're at 15 frames per second, which is not, I expected about 20 to 30. So let's go and check the graphics here. And this could be one of those games that just doesn't perform well. Because sometimes the settings get wacky. So we're still at 720. Low, 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 off, 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 off. Oh, there's some stuff here on Ultra. Let me go unlock this. Usually when I go up here and set it to the minimum, like there's a preset level, and I go to favorite performance. Look at that, it set everything to Ultra. That's not what I wanted. All right, so I got to turn everything off again. Actually, you know what, I'm going to... Uh, Would you like to apply the settings? Letting no will, yes, I want to do no. And I'm going to go in and set those settings manually because it looks like the advanced settings were locked on higher levels. So now we're unlocked. I'm going to go low, low off, low, off, off, low. Turn it all down. We're going to coax this thing to low. <laughs> How low can you go? Low, 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 medium. <laughs> OK, so let's apply those changes. We'll probably have to restart the game again. Oh, it, it hung in there. Okay. Yep, now we're at 30. This is playable. This is like 34 right here. And granted, we're out in the wilderness, but 
producer Jake was, was doing some testing. I think he must have uh, went on a journey. <laughs> so we swapped the save game for our testing. But, but yeah, we're in the 30 frames per second territory. We'll get close to some texture here. Even the draw distance is great on this. But this is totally playable. On a Chromebook, natively. Not in Windows. A little graphical glitchy things here and there, but I mean, geez. This is great. How about that? I don't know where the heck the horse went. Can you play it online? I have no idea. I don't think I have, even have an online account set up, but I would imagine you can. I could try to go into the online game real quick and see. How good this looks. It's like Grand Theft Auto. You can just, just, just carjack the, uh, the horses. Keep them on the road here, though. Oh, I think I just did something bad. But there you go. Not bad. Okay, so we'll see if the online works. I've never played the online, so I would imagine there's going to be a whole bunch of tutorials or whatever, but... Pretty cool. All right, we'll see if the online works and then I gotta go. All right, here it looks like a little intro story thing. I will say I'm getting sound, but it's pretty low. Oh, I'll choose that guy. And this is uh, running around 30 frames per second right now also. So if you keep everything low at 720p, So let me go back to the game section here. Um, RDR2, 30 FPS, 720p, low settings. All right, um, I gotta put my name in here. All right, I'm, just, I'm all good with all this stuff. Okay. Let's see how this, yeah, I need to spend more time playing this game. It looks pretty cool. Right, I'm going to skip, I'm going to skip this because I just want to get into it and see what happens. The fan is blowing like a you know what, but it's, um, it seems like the performance is staying steady here. Hey, Grand Theft Auto meets the Oregon Trail. That's... <laughs> I think that's the best way to describe it. <laughs> that is it. Well, this appears to be working. I guess if we were not connecting to the server, we wouldn't see this, right?
Yeah, so you're not going to get any of the fancy hair effects or anything like that, but I think um, from a performance standpoint, it seems to work. And you got to, I'll tell you what, Rockstar is amazing, though. When you think about, like, these, these games feel so natural. Like, even the, you know, the, even GTA V, like, you think about how old that game is, but the, um, the setting, the scene, like, everything in these games has to be built, right? So you think about a movie, you go on location, the location is there. Like, th this, these games, they have to build everything. The mountains, the rivers, the landscapes, the, the cities, the jail, the brick building, like, all of that has to be built. And, and somebody has to design it. And making a movie is a lot easier. You just show up, right? Like, it, you just get your cameras out. We're going on location today. All right, let's see if I can get through this part here. I can't skip the movie, so I'm just kind of have to let it run. Okay, looks like we're in. Yeah, it appears as though we're connected to the server here, so yeah. So online works. All right. Well, everybody, the answer is that uh, this is a pretty good Chromebook, as Chromebooks go. And I will uh, fill out their survey a little later also on that. Um, but yeah, they seem to, uh, it's kind of like a preview of what's to come on this platform, but this is quickly becoming, and I think Steam accelerates this because of the Proton layer, right? But this is quickly becoming something interesting, for sure. All right, well, thank you all for tuning in, and uh, I'll be back with a review of this next week. I just wanted to get it set up and started, and we've got a lot done today. Um, but uh, yeah, we're going to... Uh, do more with this. So thank you all for tuning in. Yeah, right. That's true, Roman. Like they, they say the game has no plot and they don't watch the story, right? So um, yeah, exactly. But yeah, I think we're off to a good start here and I'm pretty excited about, um, about this Chromebook. I think it's pretty good. So yeah, if you're into Chromebooks and you know, you want more flexibility, there you go. So I want to thank you all for, uh, for watching. And we're going to be back before you know it. All right. So have a good evening and uh, get some pizza. We've been talking about pizza. Get some pizza. I'm not sure what I'm eating yet, but it might be pizza. All right. We'll catch you all uh, on, the, on the next one. Bye-bye.